we are going to look at some different tips when it comes to media management and setting up proxies for your files. We're going to look at frames per second and a few other things that you need to be aware of as we go along. I am using DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a free application for the standard version. And you can also get a studio version, which gives you more options for color grading. The first thing to notice here at is that DaVinci Resolve works a little bit different where we have something called databases. Uh, you could use the standard local database up here or create a new database. A database can actually be taking, taken with you from different computers. The one thing to remember is if you go to um, a higher version of DaVinci Resolve from 16 to 17, you are going to have to update your database. In this case, I've created a database here called Post Demo, and that's what we're going to use. If you needed to create a new database, you can select New Database and name it. Make sure you put this in a location, otherwise it's not going to work. And this is a disk database. I'm going to create a new project. And here is DaVinci Resolve. I want you to pay attention to the bottom here. These are your different kind of windows or views. We have the media window, which is the first step as you start a new project. We're going to ingest media. In this specific demo, we're going to ingest media and just look at the different uh, views we have for media management and for proxy creation. This is also a cut page, an edit page, a fusion, which is visual effects, the color page, and DaVinci's Resolve is really a powerful color grading application. We have a fair light, which is an audio uh, editor and mixer. It's sort of uh, DaVinci Resolve's uh, version of Pro Tools, and it's built in. And then we have the delivery page. Today, I'm basically going to look at the media page and the delivery page. This is not an editing demo. I want you to pay attention to the top portion now where it says media storage. The clone tool I've um, included in a separate demo. Remember in the clone tool, it's a quick and easy way while you're doing DIT to make sure that you copy all the necessary media. Please keep in mind that you do not separate media. You copy all of the content in the folder. It's very important. In this de demo too, on the top right-hand side, we're going to look at the metadata. In my file name up here, I have a folder called Media Examples. And here I have a few different camera options, really. The most important part, like I said, is when you start a project, when you start a project, make sure the card that you're recording with is formatted and you're only really recording onto this one card from the same camera or the same audio recorder. It, w it can be confusing if you have multiple different cameras in here, etc. You might just confuse yourself with DIT. If I've done it properly, I can actually drag the entire card in to this portion, which is my media bin. It's going to ask me to change the frame rate. And voila, here are my clips. There's more to it, of course, this management of new bins, putting them in new bins. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's shift command N. I'm working in a Mac environment. I'm going to create a new bin call it 5D um, media. So on the top here, you have information about the clip, time code, duration, etc. And type is video and audio 
if I click on one of the files, I'll get some more information about the specific file. And that you'll see in the metadata tab. You have the original clip name, file name. This is what the camera dedicated to this specific file. Here's an important point. Don't change this at any point while you're creating proxies or while you're at this stage. Organization is key, yes, but please don't change this current at this point. This is an H.264 codec. This is the frames per second. In this case, it's 23.976 frames per second. And this is, of course, the resolution. So the first row is your video information. This here also shows you that this clip contains audio as well. Linear PCM is a um, uncompressed format, a lossless format. So it's an uncompressed audio format. It's 48,000 samples, or also known as 48K in sample rate. And 2CH is two channels of audio. Below that, you have more details about the clip being organized and taking a look at the information here. This will give you all that you need to know for media management, really. Start time code, end time code. This could be important if we are actually running synced time code on set. Start frame, end frame. You get an idea of the length of the clip. And this portion here is bit depth that has to do with the video resolution color bit depth, not to be confused with audio bit depth. Field dominance have to do with progressive versus interlaced scan type. And then we get down to audio channels and audio bit depth. In this case, we already know this is two channels of audio and this is 16 bit. Then we have file information that's also very useful when you're trying to figure out when this was shot what day and you're trying to locate specifics this is the file information here remember a lot of this information is also available in the finder level the finder level is when i go out here and i look for it in my drive on my desktop here's your media information as well and here i can see that information I can open a clip as well and hit command I and get a lot of this information as well, right? As file management, media management, this is also a very useful tool. I'm going to go back into DaVinci. You can customize this entire section here. On top, you have columns that you can select if you want to see it. Um, it can get very long, of course, so just keep an eye on that. If you're dealing with audio, you might want to select audio bit depth, etc. But that information is also right here in the clip detail. I'm going to show you another example of some files. If I go to my Black Magic here, these are some Black Magic media click on this and the inspector comes up. I want you to pay attention to um, how this is one, two, three, four files currently. And they are seen as a continuous file. If I, however, open this file in Finder, Reveal and Finder, I will see this. These are separated out as digital negatives, basically Adobe's raw files. So if you were to take these out of here in any way, shape or form, from the finder level, the application is uh, the application you're running may not recognize this as a continuous stream. Here's another important point. Do not mess with metadata or taking specific files out of the folder structure 
of the card that you're trying to read. If I were to take things out from this folder, then I would lose information. And as I go into my uh, media application, it's not going to see everything. You're going to lose data. It's not going to be able to transcode it properly. So this is very important. You can see these are multiple files with uh, individual names. On the final level here, we're not going to be able to do much. However, in DaVinci Resolve, this specific clip is now stitched together. So we can use this. Again, the codec is here. The digital negative file, raw file, frame rate, resolution. On the bottom, we have audio information, linear PCM, 48,000 hertz, two channel, and this is 24-bit audio, 12-bit color space. We're going to look at the red card. The red here, as you can see, first it comes in a folder. Um, I'm going to show you what that looks like in the finder and why you should not do anything specific here. You might, you might be tempted to say, I'm going to save storage. I'm just going to take the individual clips out here. No, please don't. Uh, one important point about the red media is that you can actually get this red CineX Pro from this website, red.com slash downloads slash red CineX Pro for Mac. If you're on a Mac, then this helps you view the same kind of information from the application here if you're using red footage, if you are doing DIT on set. This is a very useful application. Um, as you can see, I can take the red footage in to my bin, and here I can see the clips. It gives you more information about the color values, etc., and it gives you the metadata here that you may need. However, this is probably more useful when you're on set. Let's go into DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to take this entire folder with all the information, put it into my bin, and voila. Here we go. Now I have the individual clips in here. I'm going to select one, and I get the information on top here. This is an R3D, which is a red format, red codec, 23.976 frames per second. And this is the resolution here. This clip does not contain any audio, so it says no audio. Makes sense. Let's do an example now where we're going to convert these high resolution files into a more manageable editing format. I'm going to take these red media here. I'm going to drag that into my timeline here. I do not need the audio. Once I have all the clip that I want to create proxies out of in my edit page, I will move on to the delivery tab. Inside of the delivery tab, you'll have a new window. Make sure you're on custom here. You know, they have other options, YouTube, Vimeo, etc. We're doing pro stuff here, okay? We can figure this out. The first thing is file name and location. Self-explanatory. The one important part about file name, however, it says untitled here. Now, at first, you might say, well, I want that to be called my proxies. But no. Actually, there's one important part we're forgetting now. A, down here where it says render, we're saying single clip. Which actually means I don't want this to be one continuous played clip. 
Rather, I'm going to select individual clips. It even says it. I saw it that renders each source clip with sizing, color correction, and synced or sourced audio. Now I get it unique individual clips. There's one problem still though. The reason that we edit with proxies is because the information is so big and there's so much information in your files that we're going to basically um, not be able to render smoothly if we're going to look at the raw. That's why we're making proxies. But we want to deliver these at the highest resolution possible and with color grading on the original plates, or original, um, the original clips. So that's why we need to actually link it to the source name. Our source name should really be the same as the file name. That way, at a later stage, I can go in and say, please take this timeline of my edit and color grade these source original raw footage clips. Once I've selected the source name, I need a location. Of course, you have your own drive, so you're going to put that there in day one, right? day 01, something like that. Then I have the source name, location. The audio in this case, we don't have any audio. We're going to sync in our editing application, maybe in Media Composer, maybe in Premiere, or maybe even stay in Resolve. But for now, we're not dealing with syncing. We are not having any audio here because they're not included. However, if audio was included from the camera, please add that. Here's my video export. The format or the wrapper or your container, you can think of as your sort of suitcase that carries this, these clips in them. The information is in the suitcase, but the suitcase doesn't just hold one item, it holds multiple items. It can hold video, audio, if included, and metadata. If you're going to deal with Premiere, perhaps, um, then you might want to have a QuickTime wrapper. In Media Composer, you're probably going to deal with an MXF format. I'm going to select QuickTime, my codec, I'm going to select Apple ProRes. If you're doing proxies, you don't need high quality HQ in this case, or anything that's got quad, that means 4, 4, 4, 4, or definitely not quad XQ. These are high resolution low compressed files with a lot of data information in them. That is not good for editing. Select proxy or LT. In this case, we're doing proxy. Your resolution here is 1920 by 1080. If you find that your computer might not be up to speed, change this to 720p perhaps for editing. Once you're happy with your decisions for media management, that is, hit render queue. You will see the job is here, but the job is not done. Click render all. In this case, we have one, and it's going to generate the clips. Remember, if you have a lot of information here, it may take you some time. One important point is and we're going to go back now to my bin. And I'm going to select the new bin. And we're going to do a, a black magic. This is not here. This has 24 bit audio, 48 kilohertz audio. Um, do a new timeline. Okay. When I drag the black magic clips down, you'll see that they contain 
equals video and you have audio here. That does two stereo. We're going to make proxies out of these. So I'm going to go to this here, same window. But in this case, we want to export these clips with audio. Go to the audio page, export audio. The codec we are going to use is a linear PCM. AAC is a compressed format. Don't use that. In this case, we're going to do linear PCM and channel. There were two, two channels of audio. Excuse me. In this case, I'm not changing the channels. There were two channels of audio. If I add more, there's not more audio channels there. You're just going to create a larger file. But one important part is I'm going to keep the bit depth as 24. 24, because that is what the original file was. I don't want to go to a lower bit resolution. I want to stay with what was there. And remember, I'm on individual files. I'm on source name. Add to render queue. And my job is done here. So that's my quick tip on how you generate proxy files. Again, if you were to do Media Composer, you're going to change this to MXF up Atom. Your codec here. You want to do DNX HD. And um, this is probably a good codec. It's a, it's a little bit more compressed, but still looks good. 1080p, 36, 8-bit. Please don't change the source name. And now you're good to go. I hope that was a helpful lesson. Thank you so much, and good luck.